With the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 just around the corner, I've come to a realization. They're shit PCs. Now listen to me for a minute and let me explain. Console systems, in all seriousness, are low-end PCs. Many people know this and accept this as a common truth for the console gaming side. There's nothing wrong with that, and in fact it helps in many ways. And ways of developing games and porting to consoles and PCs just make it easier the closer the console is to a PC. Evidence of this is in the PS3 and the Xbox 360 from this generation. Many, many devs have worked on multiple platform games, have already said that it, making games for both the Xbox and the PC compared to the PS3 is easier because of the closed off garden of the PS3. Because of this, Xbox 360 has profited in many ways because developing companies prefer to work their titles first on either PC or Xbox, then just port it to the PS3. And with that kind of knowledge, Sony has made the PS4 far more open and easier to develop for for being almost identical to a mid to low end PC. Which isn't bad at all. PC markets and equipment have always outweighed the specs of any console while also being a multi-purpose machine for either daily to semi-daily life. More and more people are keeping a screen in front of their faces than ever before. But but then that is the highly technological world we're living in now. Consoles on the other hand, like I said before, are mid to low end PCs, in so many words. But they are fitted to do a job and do it right. Consoles for the most part are designed to play games, with more and more multimedia support being added monthly it seems now. And they play those games rather well, and they have far fewer issues than PC games can have. PC gamers could attest to having many an issue with trying to play a game at times. Server problems, system problems not working right, videos not playing in sync with actual games settings, and so forth. My most recent problem was getting Call of War as Bound in Blood when pre-ordering Gunslinger, which is actually a really good game by the way. You should go and check it out, there's a free demo online. And finding out it can't boot up when there's a dual monitor set up. So I had to either correct the problem file in the game code or disable my second monitor when playing until I fixed it. Same thing happened when I first bought and played Darksiders. A video bug in the very opening sequence wouldn't let me actually start the game until I changed the video name and file location. You don't see that kind of problem on console, though they can have their own problems. If I put in a game disc and either install or play it right from the disc, I know that game will work. Exceptions in this have happened, but very, very rarely. Day 1 releases do have some server and hosting side issues, but generally work fine. Multiplayer is the same. On PC side, we get the edge in being able to pick servers that fit our settings to a T, but then we have to worry about server side locks, newer and older versions of the game, game lobbies being filled up when trying to log on to it, and so on. But then consoles make it a bit easier. I can just jump onto a game and jump right into the multiplayer without having to worry about what server is open and what restrictions are or are not there. Now some console games do have server lists as a choice, Battlefield 3 is the biggest name in that option though. Now there are give and takes in all of this. I have a gaming PC, an Xbox 360, and a PlayStation 3. I see the benefits and drawbacks to all three. In console games, I can jump into a game, message a friend, and start playing with them without having to open or use any other programs. On PC, I have to send them a message, open Skype or Razor comms, find a server that is open enough to actually play with them and more. But with PC, I get far more customization in games. Mods, texture packs, added community content, skins, and whole new games out of games. Half-Life 2 being a prime example of this with Team Fortress 2 and Counter-Strike being the two biggest names from it. Again, give and take in a lot of the aspects of it. So what does making consoles similar to PCs do for gamers? How does it benefit anyone? Well, for one, it makes developing games easier. It means teams can stay on focus without having to divert as many people to port things to fit other consoles or PCs. It means modding is closer to consoles in the legal way, though that won't happen anytime soon if Microsoft and Sony don't start to open up that part of the PC side of gaming to their consoles. This benefits PC just as much as console gamers. Console ports to PC will have less issues since that format is already very, very close to what the newer consoles want to start using. Dark Souls for PC is a very big name in that. Not being made in a normal PC-minded format gave the game numerous issues on PC when it finally ported over. So in the end, consoles getting closer to PC systems is a good thing. It will help in good key ways while still making it easier for non-PC players to game with. So leave a comment below and tell me what you game on, what do you prefer, and what do you think about the new consoles being closer to PCs?